Hello lovely painter people and welcome to another project and today I'm going to be painting in acrylics but I'm using watercolour paper. I'm not doing canvas, I'm doing it on paper but it's watercolour paper. Length and rough, £140 weight and what I'm going to be painting from is this book, Bolts and Harbours and Acrylics and it's a really nice book but it has to be said it's not for the faint-hearted because there's some fairly complex projects in this one. Uh, and at the back, there's all the drawings outlined for you. So they're very easy just to follow the drawings. But you can see what I mean. There's some fairly complex projects in this one. Quite pleased with it, actually. It made a lovely book. Bolts and Harbours and Acrylic. That's a big yacht picture. And here's the gallery at the front of all the paintings that are in. It's here somewhere. There, it's all the paintings that are in the book. Make for some very nice paintings. But as you can see, like I said, there's some fairly complex pictures in here. But the one I'm doing today is that one, which is not that far away from me here in Northumberland, probably about five miles away. And it's Annick, and that's Annick, the Villier, Annick, Almouth, sorry, it's Annick, I'm saying it again, it's Almouth, <laughs> and that's it, that's the village of Almouth in the distance. And to make today uh, not too long a video, I'm going to miss out the village of Almouth. It's only a few blobs and dots and stuff like that, but it's time consuming stuff. So I'm going to miss that out and do the rest of the picture. And I'll just have a bit of land there, but you'll see that when I come to it. Okay, time for the sky. And I know I keep repeating myself, but if you haven't got a stay wet palette, get yourself one. Because they save you a lot of money. Mine's a right state. Um, take the lid off. And there's all my painting there. And I've just squeezed, let's get, get rid of the lid. I've just squeezed a, a, a couple of top ups, a bit of titanium white and a bit of raw sienna. All the rest, they've been in there for weeks now. And you can see a little bit of water in the corner here. There. And all you do, you peel back the top layer, pour a bit more water in the bottom, push that back down, and it keeps it moist for weeks and weeks and weeks. And the reason why I think they're so important is that you're not wasting paint. Because you know what acrylics are like, they dry up very quickly in your palette or on your plate or wherever you're painting with. And when you finish the picture, you've got to throw those paints away. These will keep it moist and ready to use for a long, long time. Right, before any drawing or anything else, I'm going to stick a very simple sky wash in this one. And it's about two thirds coming from the top. I'm using my one and a half inch wash brush, Aquafine wash brush, which strictly speaking is a watercolor brush but I have a set for acrylics and a set for watercolours. Just the same brushes. Plenty of water there. About two thirds of the way down, that'll do. And I'll have a little bit of cobalt blue and titanium white mixed. Plenty of water into that. And slap that on from the top. Slap that on. <laughs> First technical term for the day. Coming all the way down. And like I say, this is going to be a very simple sky. I'm not fiddling about with this one. Now what I need to do is wash my brush out. Squeeze out. And mop up. And again. Mop up. Now for clouds. Very easy. Wash my brush out. Take some clouds out. Look, how simple is that? You could paint white in, paint white clouds in. But when you're doing it nice and watery, like I'm doing it now, it's easy enough just to suck it out again. But don't use kitchen roll, because kitchen roll will leave you with a big, hard, white, sharp blob as it sucks the paint out. A brush is far more natural looking. Right. 
Now the reason why I've painted the sky on before I do any drawing is so that I don't have to paint the sky on carefully around my drawing. So I can just put the drawing on top of that as soon as it's dried. There, sky done. Now it's time for the drawing. And now it's time for the reading glasses. <laughs> Sorry, glasses. And I've got a stub here in my pocket somewhere. There we go. And I'm going to start off with the bolt. And it's on a lean. About there. So, if I press on hard enough with my pencil, I'll still see the pencil mark. Bit of an edge there. Now, that's the front pointy bit. <laughs> pointy bit, technical term. Comes round a little bit there. The lip on. And then round and into there. I'm going to extend that a little bit more. That's better. So that's a little bit lower there. Now, this comes up a little bit. And round. And then down there. And then round a little bit more. Coming downward slightly and then going up. See? And then there's the end of the bolt there. And this comes round. Again, nice rounded, a nice rounded bottom, I was about to say. I know exactly what I mean. Comes down and then down like that. But you notice this line here is running parallel to that line there. Get a lean to the thing. Here's the rudder coming out. And here I've got the water mark, the water line on the boat. Upward slightly and then down. Double line for that one. These are bits of fancy. <laughs> and it's nice to get these marks in because you're kind of like denoting to yourself where the colour changes once I'm painting it. Now the cabin on top, again, that line there, make sure the cabin, the lines of the cabin, sorry, are running parallel with that. There's one. Actually, I'm going to change that. Make it a bit wider. There's one. There's another one. And there's one other side. Now all I have to do is the top line of them. There and coming downwards. And in there, a couple of windows. little lumpy bit there, <laughs> a 
that's another boaty technical term, a lumpy bit. And have a few jiggly bits here and there. All nautical terms. I know a lot about boats, me. <laughs> Again, running parallel with that line, we'll have an aerial or whatever it is. Because I've done so many boats, so many books, sorry, on boats and boats and harbours, people assume that I know a lot about boats. I only do all these boats, these books on boats and harbours because that's what the publishers tell me to do. Um, I actually don't know anything about boats, even though I live in Northumberland. I see a lot, but I don't know anything about them. And so the technical terms tend to be boaty bits. And work a couple of bits here and there. Yeah, that's the boat done, really. Dead easy. Now, this shape that worries people about boats, if you can't just do it straight off like that, then think of that old, you know, boats in any kind of light situation coming towards you slightly, like that is facing to, towards you. Think about that old Christian symbol that you see on the back of cars, the fish. Once you've got that fish, look, finish that off. Don't finish the tail off. Stick there. Another one there. Another one there. Got a bolt. How easy is that? Now, here we go with the landscape behind this. I'll have a line there. And on top of that, I've got some hills and fields and stuff. I'm not going to draw anything in amongst that. I'll do that with the paintbrush. Now, an imaginary line all the way through the boat, so that comes out about there. And that's a bit of that there. And then behind that, this is the shoreline at our mouth. Behind that, I've got a bit more of that. Which is slightly higher, look. See, that line towards that line. I'm just showing that a bit more. And then, this is where the estuary comes in at our mouth there. And then I've got a bit more land, which in reality is where our mouth, the village, is standing in there. And that's the bit I said I'll miss out. Because it'll just take too long and make this video far too long. And I don't know about you, but I would lose concentration. <laughs> now, the estuary comes in as well there. So that's a little bit of water there. And here, imaginary line through there again, about there, that'll do. And then the grassy bit starts here up to beach there. And this is where I've got a bit of an inlet. That will be a bit of water as well. On the sand as well, we'll have a little bow here. And this one is on its looking just side on at it, so it's dead easy. And now a few boys here and there. 
those little orangey things, you know what I mean. And then when it comes to the actual painting, I'll be having a few bits of rope and stuff like that. Look, like that. And that's about it, drawing done. Incidentally, what I didn't tell you, unlike watercolours, even though I put a lot of water onto the sky and then had the paint really watery when I put it on, um, unlike watercolours, it's not going to dry lighter than when you put it on. It's going to stay the same colour as when you put it on. So allow for that. Just make sure that you get the right colour on straight away. And what I'm starting off with here is a little bit of cobalt blue and a touch of titanium white into it. And I'm using my three quarter inch wash brush and I'm just going to pop that in there. I'll have some more colours on here afterwards, but this is just the start. A little bit of that. And in the meantime, I've got a little bit of, well that's drying just a second, I'll just pop that in there. I've got a little bit of Naples yellow, plenty of water into this. Naples yellow. This is all in the far distance, so keep it distance, don't make the colours too strong. Just Naples yellow there, look. Plenty of water into it. Bring that down a bit, and a little bit of that there as well. Now, I've got a little bit of hooker's green. It's like I always say, hooker's green by itself, never use it. As a mixer, however, it's fabulous. You can mix it with every colour you've got. And you've got loads of different greens. That's Hooker's Green and Raw Sienna. Plenty of water again. And drop that in underneath where I put the yellow, the Naples yellow. I can't really speak today, Gail. Why is that? Brain's gone. That went a long time ago. Bit of that there, and a bit underneath there. Carefully around the boat. And sharpening up the line at the bottom there. Now, I'll have a, that's dried a little bit, so I'll have a little bit of that green mix in there as well. But leaving it mainly blue. Again, soften my brush out, clean down brush. Soften one into the other. Like now, for once, I'm going to go to my round brush, number eight round brush. And I've got Hooker's Green and Raw Sienna again. But a little bit stronger, a little bit less water into it. And like I said, on that bit of land behind the boat there, I want some trees and stuff, but I'm not gonna draw them all, just pop them in now. Just intimating a little bit of detail into that land in the distance there, look, trees. Just a few blobby bits. Blobby bits, that's a technical term for trees. dabbing on, all while it's still wet and it softens a little bit, because you don't want too strong, sh too strong a sharper detail in that. It's faint, keep it all faint. Intimate trees. A few bits there. And what I'm going to do there is sharpen that bit up there, at the base. And now, a little bit of blue again. Cobalt blue, because that's the blue of the sky. And this time, it is just blue with water. A few touches there. To the right-hand side of some of those blobs. Because in this picture, the, the light's going to be coming from the right. So that can cast a nice, strong shadow from the boat eventually. A few bits there. And again the line at the bottom. I 
And finally on that bit, just with a clean hand brush, we're just going to soften the blue in a little bit there, that's better. And that will do for that bit of distance. Put in that there as well. And the same process for that little bit over there. Starting off with a little bit of Naples yellow. Bish bash bosh, whack it on. Hooker's green and raw sienna. Again, a little bit more of that green and more water into it. And finally, a little bit of blue. A touch of blue. Blue always makes a difference. Oh, sounds odd putting blue into trees or grasses and things like that. But it's not going to come out bright blue because it's going on top of the other colours. All it's going to do is give more depth to that area. There, that'll do. Now, still with my three quarter inch, back to my three quarter inch brush, sorry. And I'm going to do that little bit of C in there and then I can crack on with the bolt. Again, it's cobalt blue with quite a bit of titanium white in it this, this time around. There. And plenty of water. There's that the one. And it's very, very simple just to fill that in. All the way across there, look like so. And if you want, leave a few bits of white paper shining through here and there. Coming up to the shoreline, or oh, that bit of sand. Carefully around that boat because it's easy enough to miss. And again, around the boat there. And again, just tap on here and there with the sharp of the brush so it's easy enough to leave some bits of white paper showing through. And a little bit of that over here as well. Just a tiny touch of white paper here and there between the land and the sea. And that's the landscape elements of this one done, really. Apart from the foreground. <laughs> Wash out, squeeze out, and I'll just soften here and there. Now I've gone back to my round brush, number eight round, and just cobalt blue, because I'm going in with the bolt now. Just cobalt blue to start with. And I'm filling in the hole to start with. I've got the paint slightly thicker here. There's still quite a bit of water in it, so that it runs nicely. See, with a number eight round brush, you've got a lovely point as well to be able to do some fine work. And same here. And fill in there.
You've been very quiet, girl. <laughs> very quiet person. <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? Now, into that same blue, actually, a bit there. Into that same blue, I'm going to put a tiny touch of Payne's Grey. I never use Payne's Grey in watercolours because I don't like it. But in acrylics, Payne's Grey is a lovely colour too. Get some nice darks and make black. But it's not flat and dead like it is in watercolours. So it's Payne's Grey and blue there. So it's a lot darker at this side. Like that. Not like that, just like that. And again here. And fill it in there. Now, it's time for that bottom bit. It's time to do your bottom bits. So, just burnt sienna in this. Plenty of water again. And fill that in there. Nice curve around there. And fill in. forget when I'm doing that bit the keel it's actually it's not a keel is it it's a rud rudder that one now into I want to darken that side again like I did with the blue into the burnt sienna a little bit of raw umber it's darker again there you see We're getting there. Still with the round brush, just titanium white. Of course, I'm going to the cabin now. The cabin on top of the boat. But it's titanium white just there on that side. Carefully down to the top of the boat there. And now titanium white with a touch of blue into it. Because anything white in shadow have a touch of blue. And that's going to this side here. A bit too much blue there, I think. Sign in. There. You know I went quiet for a minute then. Now, a little bit of raw umber with a touch of Payne's Great, sorry, raw umber with a touch of burnt sienna into it. That's a nice, dark, rich brown. And that's going on. The woodwork bits of the boat on the top there, look. And I'm being careful not to get my hand on the wet paint. But 
that. Coming down between the windows and across the bottom bit there. And that's the darker brown. Oops, I made a mess. Panicky not. The beauty about acrylics, of course, if you're using it wet enough like this, you can just wash it off afterwards. And if you can't, once it's dried, paint over it. Because acrylics will cover up anything. A bit more of that mix. On the bottom there. See, just paint over it. Now, a little bit of white into that same mix, so I've lightened it. And that's for that side there. Now, whilst I'm on with that brown, I've got a few wooden bits on the boat, on the hull itself as well. So again, it's still raw umber and burnt sienna. I have that there. And there. A little bit of white into that now. So again, it's a bit lighter for there. And that, on that side as well. And now, once I get those in, the bolt's not quite as bitty, if you know what I mean. Bit on that, and coming around there. Now, a little bit of white. And for this, I'm going to go to my rigger brush. With a very fine line, that one. Number four rigger, look. Again, aquafine. Number four rigger. Bit of titanium white. And I'm just going to paint that strip in there. Oops, got too much water on the brush. You see, even a rigger brush can hold too much water. Bring that round. Again, a touch of blue into that. For that little bit there. Whilst I'm in with white again, I'm gonna do the few bits of antenna and stuff on the top. Still with my rigging brush. some dark underneath it in a minute. One bit there, a few jiggly bits. And a couple of sticks. And shall I have some more bits there? Yeah, I'll have a bit there. touches look. 
now with a little bit of Payne's Grey and Blue mixed, where I've just put the white on the antenna, I'm going to put a little bit of that, a few strokes here and there, to the left hand side of them. Paints grey and blue mixed. What I don't like are some of those lines that I've just put on. I'm just going to soften them with a clean damp brush look there, like so. That's better. And a little bit of that just on the leaves as well, there. Better. What would be nice on there is a little touch of red. So I'll just have a little bit of a lizard and crimson. Don't ask me what that's for or what it is, because I've got no idea, but red's nice. And now, in the windows, again, cobalt blue and Payne's grey with a lot of water in. I'm just blocking those in, look. Like that. Just three little blocks on the front and two on the side. Like so. And now the final bit on the boat is the shadow. So I'm going back to my number eight round brush for that. And I've got a little bit of, it's called violet. Is it violet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's called violet. I call it violent violet. Because it's a very strong colour. So I've got the violent violet and a bit of paint grey. I'm just testing the colour first. Still very strong. Bit of paint's grey. And I'm just, that's better. And I'm just going to put the shadow in the vault, here and there. First of all, underneath the lip of the cabin, there. Like so. And down the right hand side of the windows. A little bit there. And again, down the right hand side of the windows. Now, where the wood finishes and the white stuff starts, a bit of shadow there. Now, underneath the lip of this, bit more shape by putting some shadow like so. Scary but it works. Now once I've put that in Soften it out with just a clean damp brush. See? Just on the outer edge of it. And a little bit to that side there. And the 
bombed a bit on the front. There. Now, a lot more water into that same mix. And this is even scarier, watch. Curve this line round. No, that's not strong enough. Better. Curve this line round, like so. And you see how that gives the boat more shape. Now that all those are dried, I can go in with my shadow colour. Again, brush out, squeeze out, just with a clean up brush, soften that line slightly, there. And there we go, boat done. Now, it's time for this little bit of foreshore there. And I'm starting off with a little bit of raw sienna, plenty of water into this, back to my three quarter inch wash brush by the way. Bit of raw sienna, and just block that in there. Like so. Coming further forward. And I'm going to have a little bit of water going out there. So I'll leave a gap for the water. And again, a little bit more of that over here. The boat. A bit more there, because that's a different tone slightly. And coming underneath the boat. I can go through those boys and stuff like that because as long as I can still see the pencil mark, I'm fine. And with this paint being so weak, it's easy enough to see that pencil line. Now, a little bit of raw umber. Just a bit, don't want much. Plenty of water into it again. A few touches here and there, look. All white, still wet. A few bits down there. And just dabbing on now, look, with the sharp edge of the brush. A three quarter inch wash brush is so useful. You can get so many effects out of it. There. Now, before I start with these grassy bits here, well, I've got that bolt to do it yet, but I want to get that bit of water done. It's very simple. It's a little bit of blue and white to start with. And just block that in, a bit too strong actually. More water, there, that's better. Just literally block it in. If I put that in now, I can just, they're very simple strokes. You can imagine if I put the grasses in first, I'd then have to paint very carefully around the grasses. Sorry, grasses. Whereas doing it this way, if I just block it in, then afterwards we can paint the grass on top. Now, a little bit of white, just to tell you what. A few touches of that here and there. And we'll have some dark in that afterwards as well. But that's when I've got the grass done. The digital art there. <laughs> it still makes me laugh, even after all these years. And I've been saying it for a hundred years. A bit of digital art. It's been 100, can it? If it's digital. No, that's true. Oh, God. Smart horse. <laughs> you said it was too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave that for a second now. In the meantime, I'll go back to that boat. And back to my number eight round. And I'm going to start off with a bit of red. Crimson. Crimson. Right across there. 
like I said, this little boat is very easy because it's side on. I leave the middle bit white and a little bit of cobalt blue and paint grey mixed for the bottom bit. There. I've just put enough paint grey into the cobalt blue to darken it. And I shall put some shadow on that in a minute. But in the meantime, those two little boys there. <laughs> two, those two little boys there. So it's a little bit of crimson and raw sienna mixed there. A bit on that one. And a bit on there. Shall I have a third one? Yeah, I think I will. I've another one there. Now I can go back to the boat. Again, violent violet and a bit of paint grey. And I want a little bit just in the top, tiny touch look there. Coming round. Again, it's a curved stroke, that, and at the bottom. Now again, clean down brush, smooth that in a little bit. See? There. And a little bit there. That'll do for that little bowl. Very simple. Now, before I do the grasses, grasses, either side here, which will finish this one off, I want to get all the shadows in over there. And so I'm going to start off with a little bit of violet again. Violet, violet. Which is actually, its proper name is Deep Violet. Deep Violet. Deep. God, I'm talking rubbish again, Gil. Mm -hmm. Things I need to agree. So, starting off, Deep violet and paint grey mixed. And what I'm doing, yeah, that's all dry. Bringing that in there. A bit stronger, actually. So that I've got a nice shadow from the bolt there. Coming across and joining the bolt. and underneath the boat. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but I can hear pigeons cooing outside. Lovely sound. And again, from here, from that boat, a little bit there, look. And going underneath the boat. And that kind of like makes the boat sit down on the, on the sand. A little bit from here and here. And there. And now a few ropes. So I'm going back to my rigger brush for this. And a quick tip about painting ropes, which are very fine anyway. Not going to see much of them, but where it goes through the dark of the boat, go in with light. And then as it comes to light, go dark. <laughs> and bring that, get on with that there on the ground and then curl it towards me a little bit there. And I've got another one there which is on dark on that end. 
So I'll just take that from the end there and bring that down towards one of the boys. I'll have another one there actually, just because I can. And then one from the little boat there. I don't like that. Look at that. That's creating a shape to me that I don't like. So, take it out. That was my three quarter inch brush. And it's not moving because it's dried already. So, the other way around that. You can get a bit of raw sienna. And repaint that there. And now a little bit of Naples yellow. Just to make sure I'm covering it. There we go. See that's what I'm talking about, how mistakes can be rectified very simply in acrylics. They are such a forgiving medium. And also, it's good to show your mistakes. Everybody makes them. But there we are, covered up and gone. Now, I'll reinstate that line. You idiot Evans, do it again. Paint red. And this time, we'll have it coming from a little bit on there. And bring that down and across. Now, for these clumps of marshy type grasses, just here, I'm going in with hooker's green, and there you go, and a lot of raw sienna into the hooker's green. That's hooker's green and raw sienna. You only need a little bit of green to a lot of raw sienna for this mix. And it's very simple, look. look. Bish bash bosh, I'm just dabbing. If I painted solidly, like that, you're going to get a very smooth, even flow. If you want some roughness to your grass, dab it. Like so. Here and there, we'll have a flick. And a dab. A flick and a dab. Stronger, a little bit darker as it's further, coming further forward. And that's all with my three quarter inch brush. This is what I'm saying, these brushes are just so useful. Three quarter. And again, over here with that. Dip dab dab. Just bash it on. As my mother used to say, if in doubt, give them both a clap. <laughs> Not allowed to say that these days, am I? Really? I'm surprised you didn't comment on that. I'll give you a clap later. Nice. And again, still dabbing. Now flicking look. Like. 
Now I'm going to darken that a little bit more. So now I'm going to go in with Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna. Remember the last one, that one, is Hooker's Green and Raw Sienna. This is Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna. Look there, much darker. Drag down a little bit. And also a few dabs of that in amongst the rest of the grass. Just tapping. Flick here on that. And we'll have some of that over here. A few more flicks there, look. Makes those come out a little bit more. Finally in this one, actually no, not finally, I'm going to put a little bit of Naples yellow on that as well. Just a few touches of Naples yellow there. Look. But what I'm going to do, look, is I'll get the yellow out. Split the brush. Like that. Not like that, just like that. And again, a few dabs. Yeah, that's nicer. Finishes off the grass nicely. And just a few bits of that over here. And now, finally, with a little bit of shadow, again, the violets from the paints grey, I want to get a little bit of that just in here. That's a bit purple. as the grass finishes and the sand starts there. Bit of digital art. Likewise here, digital art, look. Drag that across. It's not moving. It's not moving because it's drying so quickly in here. No, that's bad. Just to the right hand side of that look. And that's the job done. All that remains now is to take the tape off. And there we go. A finished little painting. It wasn't that complex really. That's because I missed quite a few bits out. Like as I said, our mouth in the distance. But the original is in the book and it's there to be copied or followed because there are stages in it as well. Um, the paper I'm using, as you can see, there's no, too, not too much wobble in this, a little bit, because it's still a little bit damp here, but when I take the tape off, it's all going to dry out flat. And that is the Langton Rough. It comes in two sizes on my web shop, on my e-shop, um, A3 and A4 is what we send out. Lovely paper. And as I said, the brushes, Aquafine, and I've used for this painting today, which is what I always use, I don't know why I just said that really, it's what I always use, one and a half inch flat, three quarter inch flat, number eight round, and a number four rigger. That's it, that's all the brushes I ever use, either in watercolours or acrylics. The paints, System 3, they are such lovely paints. As you can tell, they're good and strong in colour, um, but they go on. It's so lovely and creamy that it's a yummy texture. System 3. 
there. I've used more than that, but those are the tubes. And one of those tubes, they're each £2.70 on the website. So they're not expensive paints, but as I said, they are such a beautiful consistency when you're painting with them. And you can get them good and thick, almost like an oil painting, or you can paint it with plenty of water, like I've just done, almost like a watercolour. Um, so you've got the paper, you've got the brushes, you've got the paint, and everything's on the website. The brushes, the book that I use on this one was the Bolts and Harbours in Acrylic. A very handy book, but there's some really quite complex uh, projects in that, so give them a go. But the drawings are in the back for you to have a look at as well anyway. Another good book for acrylics, Acrylics for the Absolute Beginner. That one's a bestseller actually. Um, can't keep pace with it because it is such a handy book. And there are so many tips and te techniques in there. It's just packed full of them. There. I'm just flicking through very quickly. Everything is staged by staged. And you've got tracings in there, which you can either use just as a reference, or you can pull the tracings out and use them to put on your paper. Full of tips and techniques, that one. Acrylics for the absolute beginner. Really, I'm proud of that book anyway. Really nice book. So, hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you're on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, at Charles Evans Art. Um, and every painting I'm doing in my own studio here, which is not for YouTube, I'm still putting them on Twitter stage by stage. So if you're into Twitter, follow me and you'll see pictures. Um, if Hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you have, give it a like or a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe and that way you get notifications whenever I'm doing anything. So I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.